Hi guys, welcome to the lab. We are in the process of uh, writing and designing a scanner generator library. Uh, well, since maybe may a little later, but we start with the, the main library, which we might be able to use in different projects. And um, basically, we would like to say something like this. So uh, we want to, we want to create a scanner specification where we can add some tokens here. I'm uh, just as a test, I'm, I'm adding the token which I'm calling test. Um, and the token is empty. This is just for internal for testing purposes. Uh, here I'm adding the token called plus, which just consists of the symbol plus and uh, a literal, uh, sorry, um, the keyword for each, which I'm calling a KW for each. And out of this specification, a scanner generator shall be generated. And yeah, we are working on this. So um, today I want to start working, adding the port for adding uh, tokens where you don't specify the exact, the exact uh, pattern, which is matched against, but uh, using a meta language, so regular expressions to uh, define a whole class of tokens. For example, uh, I would like to uh, basically be able to specify uh, a token class, which I, I'm here calling literal, and I would like to uh, specify it as a regex. Um, so yeah, well, basically any digit um, which with the any sequence of digits uh, w w with at least one element, but uh, it can repeat as often as you like. So yeah, I, I want to work on this today. Um, but first of all, um, I had a little problem, which I'm going to fix first. So the problem was, so basically as we develop, we keep track of some uh, to-dos and one of the to-dos is um, well basically my logging um, mechanism which we also developed as part of the series um, met, uh, met, met, <laughs> sorry, made um, copies which were not really necessary and well I didn't specify the error message very nicely here in, our, in my code but this is what this to do message means so, and I think I figured something out. So I'm going to remove this to uh, to do and just uh, well, um, let's build. Well, let's not let's not remove it yet. So I'm first going to um, build a little test case here. So I'm going to um, build a dummy constructor for my string view uh, class. And uh, I'm basically just going to print something in the constructor and in the destructor. So let's see, I would like to log. So uh, let me remember everything. Core logging, I think. Yeah, so let's just log uh, constructor. And let's just print constructor. The destructor and actually verify that our problem occurs. So if I now, um, well, let's just build a little test main. <clears throat> so let's build a string view, which I'm just calling message, hello world, nothing fancy. And then I'm just going to log our message. How many copies do we actually get? So I'm expecting two since we do, we make more copies than we actually need. Every time you call log, your value gets copied. Our goal would be to eliminate this copy. So let's actually see what happens. Uh, so, uh, ah, well, I see what the problem is here. So I'm basically I'm missing a line break in my uh, print message. Uh, let's just run it again. So, oh, we get actually get more copies than, than I actually expected, but yeah. So 
let's reduce it to just one, uh, basically, since um, I always would expect one um, uh, one constructor print and one destructor print since main constructs the value once, and I would expect that uh, the value gets the instance gets destroyed when and uh, when, whenever the scope of main is exited. So yeah, I just uh, I'm expecting Ctor hello world detour as a, as a, as a log print. So <clears throat> how, how our logger is implemented is that we have a uh, basically we call this macro which uh, lets us later extend our log format um, a little bit more flexible. Uh, basically we could include the position from which source code location uh, you're, you're calling debug log. So that's why it's a, mac a macro, but it internally just delegates to logging.log, so logging log. And um, this is a um, template, uh, a templated function which just delegates uh, to log one for each element. Uh, well, and this is where the copy comes from. So we basically copy it in here and also we call to log. So, and I figured out that this pattern uh, actually would, um, for example, if we would like to differentiate how the argument is locked, we, had, we only would have to um, specialize this method, but um, we can completely abstract away, completely remove the copies if we actually do it a little bit differently. So in this case, we're just handling one argument and spreading the argument, the calls out for, for all of them. Um, but basically, if we inline this method, um, we can have more control on how C++ expands our uh, generic argument. So as far as I understand, of course, I'm not an expert on any of this. Just how, just how I explain it to myself. So basically, what I would like to do, I just, I'm going, just going to inline this, and let's explicitly uh, give a name to the first uh, argument. So, and then I'm going, just going to replicate what I had before. So, I get a value of type T and basically the, some rest arguments. And here I'm just going to log the D value and then I'm going to recursively call um, you know, basically the same function again, but using args. Uh, I'm just spreading out the arguments and just calling it. I, it's not really recursively. Well, uh, no, it's not recursively since the compiler expands the mark macro and get generate specializations for all of the different um, overloads, which are basically implicitly specified by the arguments, uh, by the parameters. Yeah. Uh, no, the parameter types. Yeah. So, and um, also I would like to, so here we are explicit explicitly materializing the logger implementation for type T, um, but we are passing the value as a const reference. So this is what will allow us to um, specify a logger for string view. Uh, in this case, the class is a, is a specialization for string view, but the method, the log method, can accept it as a const reference. Exactly how I want uh, to express those kinds of things, but yeah, so, but I'm, I just don't want to make uh, more copies. So what is your problem now? So now basically I'm calling it a const char. Now, um, where there is no lock method um, which accepts a, a const char pointer reference, I think. Well, this error message. Lock is not a member of logger char six. So I think it's just a char. I think it basically just can't find the implementation for the uh, pointer. So just let's just keep it. 
And in this case, just and we're just giving a different type here. Um, so and of course I have also I also have to specify the base case of the inductive definition. So basically we're spreading out the rest of the arguments, but if we for example just have one argument, we're using the logger, we have to uh, specify a base case for this inductive expansion. So uh, at the end we have just a empty log function. Uh, now, now um, what does it say? So we have a a T of type char, but it's not correct. We never pass. I don't think we pass a character directly. Well, yeah, well, maybe we do, but so I think it gets confused because we. What is a, what is a problem? So basically, so we have a const char pointer. How do we want to do this? So I, I think it's this case which causes the problem. So it tries to print the const char using the char logger. Ah, since I I I see I see. So we basically try to const. Um. So we give it a const char. So t is a character. So it requests a logger for type char, which we have defined because we want also we would also like to print individual characters, but we refer, we give it, we pass the value, so the const char pointer directly. So this is the problem. How how can we fix this? So maybe let's let's just hack it and treat pointers differently for now, since I'm not going to implement any other printing methods for pointers as well. So like does this actually fix our problem already? Yeah. So that was kind of easy. But now we are passing everything as const reference, even though well if you we print what happens if we actually print the jar? So let's just print hello world, then like 42 and a line break again. What happens now? Does it work as expected? Well, yeah, it does. Perfect. So problem solved. We just nuke our testing code. Our test. I'm just going to do it via get git. So this. As stays, stays just debugging stuff. Then um, ah well, I don't. I also need to move the to do. Oh, it's gone. From for grammar. So solving. Not require copy your value. So, so then I'm just resetting all the other changes. Perfect. Exactly as I wanted. Oh, ah, yeah, I see. Just hits my debug breakpoint. So, so um, basically, let's start with the main task, our main goal for today. So maybe let's just. I would I would like to draw something. So just to visualize what we already have here. I'm waiting for my uh, drawing program. Ah, it opened perfectly. So, um, 
I don't know why the whole UI is German. German. Uh, I'm actually always installing everything in English, but yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. So let's just ignore it for now. So um, what do we have now? So basically, um, uh, if we want to, so um, maybe I have to start a little bit in, in, it, in the different spots to explain what I, I'm going to do now. Um, let's say uh, you have a, a program. Um, let's say, uh, let's just keep it very simple. We just would like to do something like this. If you would like to pass something like this. Um, then basically your computer starts here and tries to match your expected character. Yeah, basically in a, a scanner generator, um, tokens, each token uh, gets a different automaton, which is going to, um, uh, this is also not really correct. So I, I didn't think of anything to say, just talking. <laughs> so. A one way to do it, let's say, let's keep it like this. One way to detect this is to build a little uh, generate uh, um, a little automaton which recognizes this token, and uh, and and then repeat this for every kind of token you have in your. Life. And then you have several smaller automatons. For example, one which recognizes if. So let's actually build it. Oh. We have an automaton which starts at state A um, and then it sees an I and then in in ah, sorry, it transitions to B, then it sees an F, then it transitions to C, and basically it was not really like um, better circle and I'm just going to note, so the little arrow at the first state means, okay, this is the start state and I'm doing a little underline to mark this as an accept, accepting end state of this automaton. So basically we have a keyword if, this is the automaton which it recognizes and uh, what do we have here for example true, so it's just uh, a state and then a T and another state, um, R, another state, U, and another state, E. This one just accepting, and this is an E. So basically, you have success uh, successively matched those characters to accept the key, uh, the token true, for example. And yeah, so and basically, um, out of those two smaller, so this is really trivial, of course, for a literal token. So for tokens that you match literally in the source file, you you just create, um, you just have as many transitions in your automaton as you have letters in your keyword. Or for example, you could also have a symbol, of course. So for example, to so this is a T basically um, to detect to recognize a plus. For example, you just have to see the plus and just accept. So a really trivial um, state machine. Yeah, but uh, you then have it is really trivial. So you have, have as many transitions as you have characters, uh, and you have one more state. And the first one is always the accepting state, and the last one in this chain always. Oh, so no, sorry, sorry. The first one is the start state, and the last one is always the accepting state. So this is what we currently um, support. But today we would like to also work on the regex tokens. So, for example, to, uh, we would like to generate an automaton, for example, which um, recognizes the keyword specified by the regular expression for 
um, a integer literal, for example, and the automaton could look something like this. We start in the state, uh, which I'm just calling A here, and then we have to see one character, zero, uh, one digit, zero to nine. So instead of um, drawing uh, 10 different arrows uh, with each of them uh, digits from 0 to 9. I'm just co going to com combine them here in one position. Um, then we have another state B. And um, this one state is a loop. So this, this state is accepting, but you can also continue matching characters, consume characters. So well, this is a really ugly nine. Just, well, it's a little bit better, I think. So, so in this um, automaton, of course, matches this regular expression. We start in state A. We have to see at least one character, one digit in this case, and then we go. We we can accept, but also we can. Um, consume more characters and stay in an accepting state. So, for example, we would like to do something like this. So, as a first step, to achieve this, um, I will actually, uh, we will actually do this in some steps. So, we first have to of course, we have to parse regular expressions, and then we can. Um, so let's sketch out what our basic our our tasks are. We already did so. Um, well, this we already did. So I'm just exec. Uh, uh, Putting a little x. Well, maybe let's do it like in front. Yeah, just like this. So just to keep track of what we already what we are doing. So then we have to pass regular expressions, and using those uh, trees, we can then uh, create the non-deterministic finite automate uh, automaton for regex. So of course, I would like to remove this. So we are currently in the our next task. So let's just jump uh, straight in. So I hope I explained everything well. I'm trying my best here. So we want to do this, but of course we just we need to um, look at the regular expressions a little bit more cleanly, so that we can um, yeah basically do. Anything with them com computationally, we have to do a representation, uh, which we actually, uh, which is useful to do something else with it. So, well, I think you know what, what I mean. So let's just uh, jump into it. So let's just close everything. So. So now I'm thinking how to do this. So basically, we would like, of course, a little parser, which itself. Uh, let's let's just build something. So let's just do a new class, which I'm going to call regex parser, uh, and then. Um, what will it return? So it will return an either, I suppose, of an error or a tree. How do I how do I call my trees? So what how did we call it here? So we have a namespace called Sigil NFA. So and this one is the tree for So basically, our parser um, let's sketch 
a very simple API. So I would like to construct my parser, of course. Then maybe let's uh, put a method in which is going to initialize and reset the parser state. I'm thinking so that's what what will allow me to reuse instances. So I'm not going to use the constructor for that. So and here I'm just going to say. I think I'm just going to give it a string. Or maybe let's do something like this. So I'm giving it the raw, the, the string that I'm going to pass, input, but also I'm giving it a file name. So later we will pass it from a file um, for, for error messages. But for now, this will just. Oh well, just maybe I will just I will do it whenever I need to. So then, of course, I have to remember the input. Um, something like this. Then um, and then I'm just going to. Something like this pass, return an error message or a something. Oh, well, this is not how you write C. So, something like this. And here we have to figure something out. So, let's start with this. So, how would I like, how do I, would, how do I want to call a tree that represents a regular expression? Let's call it regex, I suppose, regex. <laughs> so let's produce a new class that I'm just going to call um, Let's call it regex, regex. Yeah, let's not sweat it. Let's just throw something, you can always rename it. So and now uh, I want to basically return a regex tree in the uh, successful case. <clears throat> okay. So let's make this build. So we are going to edit our CMake list. So maybe I will also restructure this and put this into a different directory, but uh, I'm not doing anything. So let's just, um, how do we need this? So basically, let's just edit. But uh, uh, it's actually sorted alphabetically. How did I do this? So uh, NFA, let's just edit. Regex and the regex parser. So I, and I, I don't call this tree like this. I use a different notation to emphasize that here I'm using a parser which parses a whole regex, uh, but my regex term class here can also just is a, a re expression which is part of a regex. And the whole thing is, of course, it means the whole regex, but it also can just mean a, a one, one part of a regex. So basically, uh, well, comments are, yeah. So I'm deliberately choosing the names here because I have a, a different semantic model what this regex, what this word regex means in this word, but yeah, <clears throat> doesn't really matter. Just wanted to say, um, I have my reasons. So, does it actually compile like this? Uh, no, it doesn't compile. Um, because we're requiring some libraries. So, we need string view. And yeah, well, regex is um, defined in visual regex. I think we can uh, include this since, yeah, 
our con the, con the consumer of our parser wants to work with regex. But how should I just, how should I forward declare it? But let's just forward declare it, I think. Um, regex. So, oh, and we're putting everything into our namespace Zigil. Of course. And of course, we also need to do either. So I can't remember if it is either or either, but I don't care. So, okay, something like this. Uh, so let's just implement those two methods. So, but I think initializing. Oh, I think I think we will the parser will grow. Um, but what is your problem here? So I'm just just going to remove the result here. So let's just say um, uh, not implemented. So it does a build. So and now I'm just going to uh, use a different main to test the parser individually. So regex parser, and I think we will also need regex later. So we want to do something like this. So we will have our parser, which is of, of course located in our library, and we would like to say parser.initialize and we give it a regular expression. Let's just work, use our example here. So I'm, I think I'm going to uh, write some unit tests for those. I think it would be quite handy. Do some unit testing. This context, basically, yeah. The regex should always the regex parser should always work. So initial end initializing doesn't do anything, but of course, you just remember the input. Also, clear some uh, state, but of course we don't have any state yet. So this should be a trivial, trivial change, but of course now initialize just a setter basically for this value uh, at the moment. And as you see, as you can see, it, it really is. And it contains our token, which we just passed in. So, and now we would like to uh, call pass. So we get a either expressions back. Oh, I'm writing names differently. Either expression. If it is error, just going to, I think the code, I'm just going to steal this code. Going. And then I'm just going to parse, parse. Here I'm just renaming this to the how is it called? Uh, e, e the expression. So yeah. So let's just join this. Here we get our pointer back. Regex. Let's call it this. And this I don't know this move. So and basically I would now expect. Um, an error, since we always return an error saying uh, not implemented, and yeah, exactly, we, we get exactly this. 
So now we can start working on parsing it. So, <clears throat> like you, we might, um, you might see. So, let's do something like this. So, first of all, um, oh my. So first of all, let's put the regex class also into a namespace. Um, so and I want basically want to. This is just a class which contains some data. So I'm just going to differentiate between the different AST nodes of our regular expression. So what do we actually? See? Need. So, uh -huh. oh, so, yeah. So, we have different kinds of regular expression. For example, you, you can just say we want to see the uh, letter A uh, followed by letter B. Okay. Well, just let's just uh, keep it simple. We can we can specify we would like to see A, uh, and then. Maybe let's write it something like this. So a red defined as either a literal um, or let's let's say something like this. So it's a character, a single character, or regex could also be I think you're writing it like this in like uh, Bacchus Nora, I suppose. We call this. And a regex could also be a regex uh, followed by another regex. A regex can also be regex followed by a plus, which means um, that we are required to always match the pattern exactly once. And of course, you have basically the operator, which is similar to this, but also uh, allows no repetition. And you almost always have the possibility to say this regular expression is optional. So it can match it, but it also but it isn't required to. And then you have regular expressions have parentheses to group regular, uh, regular expressions. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And also you have character classes, so you can say something like um, Define this as a separate rule uh, for now and just ignore it. Let's just model what we already have here. So, um, and of course, you have have different kinds of things. You can also could also accept something like uh, this. So I think this means repeat this pattern exactly two times. But we will just start simple or, or like this. And, um, repeat the pattern at least two times, but maximum five times. I think also this is possible and this is possible. So different, a uh, lot of different options. But we just um, let's just do something like this. This is a let's call this one atom. And let's move this out here. So this one is just a character. Let's just try to model this structure, this syntax tree structure given by this a grammar. So I don't really know how you end this, or how you write this, but I'm I using I'm using um, I'm using a kind of backpackers now here. I don't know if I'm actually. Complying to the standard, or well, I don't even know if there is a standard, but 
let's model uh, this tree. So do something like this. So our regular expression. I would like to model. Yeah, uh, so I already said that. Just hack something. So I would like to um, differentiate the different node types by an enumeration, and I'm just going to write them down. So we have atom. We ha have the concatenation of two, now, which I'm just going to call it concat. The star operator is called key. Um, then this one is. Repetition, but I think this one is called positive Dini, but I'm not sure. Optional, and I think grouping is just relevant for the parser. So, but let's maybe eat and look how this operator is actually called. Uh, called yeah. Want to go towards that thing? Uh, yeah. So let's see regex. Let's see what Wikipedia says, and also in English, please. So how is the repetition thing called? So oh yeah, maybe doing this later. Um, yeah, so we basically support those. We already have those. Oh, yeah, of course. You can also have the OR operator. So let's just steal this, of course. Um, so you, you have the concatenation, but also you also have the alternative. Oh, is concatenation Dinista. So how do you call the operation? So this is a formal definition. And of course, if you have the concatenation, you can build the a positive operator building those. Um, but I think I will just ignore this. Yeah, and then you have also meta characters like negation in classes and the mark of the start and the end of a uh, regex, but I'm just going to ignore all of this for now. One or more time. Yeah, well, I just, I'm not going to, well, I'm just uh, going to call it positive. Or well, maybe let's this is the cleany operator. Yeah, let's just keep the name. I don't know if this can't find it video here. So we have the an atom, we have an alternative, the concatenation. We have the cleany operator, we have the positive cleany. And we have the optional. And I think grouping is just done in the parser. Going to this. Um, let's say that a, a byte should be fine for those types. So, and of course, every regular expression knows its type. Um, Maybe let's also allow invalid as a dummy value. So that if we have a type or an uninitialized regular expression, it always falls back to this. And yeah, I'm just going to build a little accessor method for the underlying type. Yeah, what did I paste here? Class, of course.
Oh, I think it builds. Nice. Now I'm just going to classes for every case, basically. So we have the atom. And it inherits from regex. Um, I'm not going to um, define the constructor yet. Just going to leave it empty for now. Uh, well, but I have to delegate to the parent constructor, which I didn't really specify yet. So the, so the regular expression gets a type. Um, would be protected only. So this is public, but this is protected only. And the type, we're just going to remember this. Yeah. So what's your problem? I think it wants a uh, no discard. So then of course, just delegate here to our parent constructor and just say we are an atom. I specify atom. Yeah, I did. All out of line since I would like to have a clean interface. And I don't really care about speed yet. Uh, not yet. So oh, let's just get the compiler, the IDE generator all stop. Oh, so basically now just move, I'm just moving those um, out of line. Um, paste. So now we can represent atoms. So in alternatives, um, well, basically they have a left-hand side or a right side, and either of those cases can be matched. So you get two patterns, and either the left one or the right one can be matched. Um, Well, this is what I what I already know. But this one also gets two has two patterns at the left and the right side, but it's only differentiated by the operator. So shall I hack something? Well, no. Let's let's just keep it simple. Don't want to build a complicated hierarchy here. So we just remember the left, and we remember our, uh, the right alternative. And the constructor is really simple. We're just going to tell our parent that we are a, a on an alternative. And uh, we have a left part and a right part, which we're just going to remember. So now we have an alternative, then we have the concatenation, which is the same as the same structure, concat. Um, concatenation, let's call, give it a little bit better names. What did I do wrong? This is of course. Oh. 
But it's, it's just a little bit of copy paste. Um, and of course, we have to tell our parent yeah, this. So now, our class key, we're just augmenting a, a nested pattern. So we just have a one, a single expression. We're just, ah, let's just. Everything we're just going to remember our uh, nested expression. Of course, the constructor we can also call key. Then let's produce copies for how did I call this positive key and optional. So 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 now cleany um positive cleany and uh, optional. Now we have a a definition of our syntax tree, which we are going now going to pass. Um, hey. So let's now. I want to so our atom here. So let's build a method that let's do it dumb for now. So I'm make I'm introducing a method which I'm just calling red. Ah uh, well, but find here. Ah, uh, let's just do it in the the class. So let's do it as a static function. So I'm just going to create a static method in the source file or a private method. Which I'm just go going to call create Ajax. And it always returns a regular regular expression, but it uh, will be um, so. Basically, I would like to do something like this. I would like to say create regex, uh, and I would like to give it a concrete type. So, for example, atom, and then pass it all the uh, arguments the constructor actually needs. So, atom needs none. Uh, but for example, alternative requires two, so in this case, I would pass it parameters um, and the argument. But those I will, I'm just going to forward. So, so and for now, I'm just going to new t. Um, so it, it implementation is really really dumb. I'm just going to call the constructor. I do forward. Or like this. I'm just going to new everything. And of course, I have to include digital or not signal, digital regex. Oh, not the pause. 
So now then I would have a an atom here, but all the decasted as a do I want to? Oh, let's just keep it. Basically, I can also return the concrete type. No, uh, no, no, no. Let's just do the regex. Okay, well, so basically, I'm using this everywhere, and maybe I will do something later a little bit more smart when allocating, and then I can just replace this. This is the idea. So, no, let's just think how this is structured. So, I think. Those. How is this cast? So if I do something like this. So A, B, C, or D. What does this mean? Is the concatenation? So does it mean? Let's simplify this. A. A, B, or D? Does it mean it can recognize A, B, D, A, B, and D? Or does it mean that it can recognize A, A, B, or A, D? So which operator? So is the concatenation operator? Um, has the, uh, the alternatively higher precedence for the concatenation, which is just um, which is just expressed by just a per, uh, just a per position, uh, juxtaposition. Um, so if you write them next to each other, it just means concat. Oh, I'm actually not sure what how does the, the different regex. There's a tool called regex tester, I think. Uh, let's use this one since I well I, I don't have Python installed so, so I otherwise I would ch check uh, Python of course so A B or D so using the uh, this regex engine um, this means A B or D so A B Matched. A D is not matched, but A is matched. So and here I have to specify the this I think to consume the whole. Ah, well, it's not required. So okay. So the um, what's it called? So this operator is the weakest. So this one is stronger, and I think those are the strongest. So basically. We write A star, A B star. This means we can take an A, but also A B, A B B B B, and then uh, B as long as you want, since the operator um, has the highest precedence, the postfix operators. And uh, I think those have, I, I'm going to define those on the same level of precedence. So this means um, atom. So I think I have a hierarchy. So basically, how you pass precedence, there are different ideas. I'm just going to do, I'm not quite sure what I want to do. So how do I want to propagate error? So let's just hack something. Let's explore how to do this. So I would like to do something like um, the private method, which I'm well, don't know why why I fall back to this way of writing variables. Ah, I see what I forget here. I'm forgetting the explicit thing. I don't want implicit conversion between regex of those types. So let's pass um, expression zero. And this is the the highest precedent, the, the lowest precedence. 
Well, let's let's start simple. Let's pass atoms. So and an atom is a character. Let's start really, really simple. So um let's do something like this. Um I want to pick the character, but I also can reach the end of the input. How do I want to deal with this? Let's just use proper types for now. I don't have an option yet, but I don't want to do option now. I don't want to do option now. Maybe I do actually want this, since I really like this API. So let's just. Uh, Let's just do it. Budget. So I would like to introduce another concept of functional programming. Um, so similar, similar to either, but can only it only differentiates a value and no value, not. Um, uh, uh, well, no, let's do it later. Um, I don't want to introduce this one now, um, but I think I will do this. Um, I put it onto the the to do notes. I'm not going to push. Maybe maybe I will push them. Ah, uh, no, I don't. Not for now. So to pass an atom. Um, so oh, let's let's just split it into two methods. Let's just introduce a method um, and peak and peak and let's return in character and let's say um to do um this might get nicer. Using option. Ah, so uh, basically, if we return peak returned an option char, I don't would not require uh, can peak. But yeah, I'm not going to implement an option now. So and now uh, we also have an, we, we remember our last scene offset. And uh, basically, I'm remember bring it. Uh, uh, as a positive, uh, as a negative, a signed 64 uh, bit integer and initialize will also initialize offset to zero. Um, and can peak basically now just uh, checks if our offset is negative, then we can't peak. Because then we are we were not initialized, or we reached the end or something. Um, uh, otherwise, I can uh, check if offset is smaller than input size. In this ca uh, case, we can peak. Uh, and otherwise we could not, so I'm just going to return this predicate here. This. So in this case we can peak, and um, um,
Well, and to peak, we're just going to third that we actually would peak. Um, and then we are just going to just use the offset as an index, just look into, just return the character. And advance is basically peak and advance as a. Uh, well, ju let's just. Let's remember the character. We're just peaking the character, and then we're just advancing our offset. And we're just returning. Now, now we can reverse our underlying da uh, data without directly accessing um, So now to uh, pass an atom, I'm just going to I think I'm going to peak. So oh, I'm here. Then to pass an atom, um, we have to see a letter. I think that is not a meta correct character. So parentheses are handled differently. So let's just let's just peek. Or can I just pop? Ah, oh, let's just peep. And then I will, I'm just going to switch the result of peaking. Just going to say if we see a or a meta character. Let's just do it really simple. So, if we see a parenthesis, I can like this. We see an uh, opening or a closing parenthesis. We see an opening or a closing bracket. In this case, I'm just going. So how do I'm communicating errors? I think that I am setting the value here, so I'm just remember that I have a problem. Of course, just return null.
Hmm. Pretty sure I would like to do this. Well, do, do I want to return an either in every case? All those cases. Model errors. Expected atom, but got this value. Let's just use the same signature everywhere. So our pass atom method also returns either, but I think I will introduce another class encapsulates pass errors. So projects pass error. I'm just going to say acted um expected But I don't want to do this. I don't want to allocate images on the. I don't want to allocate them on the heap. So let's just fail them. Let's just fail silently for now. So in this case, I'm passing an atom. Um. Oh, those are valid, but if I see I want to repeat all cases, so ah, I don't want to do this. So let's do this a little bit more smart. Um, if we, so let's just remember the character we saw. So if our character is a letter, So, if we see a letter, oh, this doesn't uh, cover all cases, but I'm just going to, um, well, just, I'll just, I'm just going to something. So, in this case, for a regex parser, Turns a uh, 
How do I want to do this? Could I? Ah, ah, I don't know, I don't know. Bad ah, decisions, all decisions. So let's just create a for every uh, thing. So let's just remember our character in the atom for now. So an atom now remembers its character. Now I'm just going to return an atom here. So, so we saw a character that we which we care about, so we can advance our state. Return a create. So this method is also not written. Um, oh, I would like to do this create projects. Exp. Uh, using different name conventions. S. Um, S. I'm using else. So and in this case. Just uh, debug dog um, affected atom got character. So what did I do wrong? Uh, Now I have to include logging or logging that I can log print. And in this case, I'm also going to return and get the error in this method. So but I think I need to communicate errors. So just let's just see if it works. So, so we use parse atom now and um, if we see an expression, we get a non-null non expression, say uh, we return just the expression result right expression. It is not valid. We just return just returning result left. Just say it path failure. Path error. Path error. So. So oh, let's uh, change to ABC, for example. Let's see what happens. So I'm first creating an instance of my parser, then I'm initializing it. Should be sized. So we are looking at the first character, uh, and we have three more to see. Then I'm calling parse. Parse is calling parse atom using character A. Now we should get into the first case, which we do. Then internally, the state gets adv adv uh, advanced. Yeah, we're now looking next character. We returning an atom. So now uh, we actually get a value with an expression. Type atom. 
if we actually look at this, so let's cast atom uh, expression to atom. And let's have a look inside. So now, now that, uh, yeah, well, we now we have more details. Now we see the character as well. So we cast a single character out of our regex. And in this case, we return and succeed, but of course, this is really correct behavior. But yeah, so first step. The first step is done. So now we can pass atom basically. And waving, I'm waving a lot since this is exhaustive. So now um, now basically I can let's define a predicate. This atom and which takes in a character which just answers this. Just calling is atom here or character and So now I can just add some cases here. It would be fine. Or I could also do something like this. So let's test it. Actually test it. I don't know if this actually works. So um, if I'm just defining a array, which I'm calling um, Table. Let's be really creative. And I now initialize it like this. A is a at an atom. Oh, I can't. Like this. Okay. This? No, I can't. Ah, uh, so unfortunately, I cannot do this. So let's just take it together then. So let's work on the next. So now we can pass atoms. The next highest precedence are those postfix operators. So let's work on those. Um, of course, atom is not uh, exhaustive, but yeah. Let's just see how it goes. Then we can always adjust everything. Um, so now. Uh, pass a post fix operator. So let's also create a helper method to do some this. I would like to ask if. Um, the character is in a, in a range. I would basically do something like this. And then, uh, then I can say between a z z. I think it reads a little bit better. 
I will also will write it like this. A. Um, so if this C between A and Z, Z, and we are also a atom, and um, if we are a digit, so between zero and nine, then we are also an atom, so like this. Then um, a postfix operator. Um, as an atom. So well, this should be really easy. We pass an um, atom, pass atom, and if we are already in error, we just propagate the error, and else um, now we peak, um, and if we see a uh, a star, we create a regex uh, which we call clean, and uh, we just wrap wrap our atom, and we have to advance, and this for all our three cases. So three. So we have uh, our cleany, we have our, our positive cleany, and we have our optional repetition, uh, optional pattern. And if none of those cases match, we see something else, and then we're just going to default and return our atom. So then we don't have a postfix operator. Ah, well, so thank you, Sudain, for compressing this. Syntax a lot. So, but let's let's uh, try out what happens if I say a plus b, for example. Does it then match a? A b should be matched, and also a r. Yeah, so it should work as I as intended. So now, instead of pass atom, let's call pass postfix. See if we actually. So here. So let's see what, what happens. So we see, we go to pass postfix, we, we pass a atom as we did it before. So this still works. Then we wrap it, we return an atom node. So our atom is not null. And we peek ahead, we don't see a any of those cases, so we just return the atom as is, and it is a successful. Okay, okay, now let's see what we have to do now. For now, I think um, concatenation and alternative. Um, let's just build the precedence stack, I suppose, and See what uh, what problems occur when I throw more complex examples at it. But let's just uh, throw in the the hierarchy. So, so now I would like to do concatenation. So, and I would like to this here. So and I, and I suppose I'm just going to pass a postfix operator. Um, and while while we still look at an atom. Uh, 
for first of all error propagation. We already saw an error, we just return it. So now if our cursor is on top another of another atom, we um pass it so um so this one is the base case call it base then then let's say now let's call this one result this one call let's call it expression we call uh, pass another postfix operation and also error handling here. So we are looking at an atom, so then we should be able to pass a postfix operator. Uh, yeah. Um, but we, if we can, we can just result create a regex with a concatenation where our old result is the left branch and our new one is the right. And at the end, we can just return the result. So I think this would be, would be it. So and I think now also our primitive example should work. So let's let's see what our parser does. We enter pass only. We have to call past uh, past concatenation. Let's restart. <clears throat> so we pass concatenation. We pa first pass our first postfix of. Let's peek in. So our result is an atom. Let's. Um, what this is. So we have an atom of with a character A. Then we currently looking at our so if we peek what happens? We look at the next character. Our next character is should be the B. B is an atom, so we should continue passing postfix of we got another one. So oh, the other one, the need, the next one is um, is also an atom. Now our result not a atom anymore. So let's pass this to a concatenation. Be a concatenation. Yeah, this contain, containing an atom. The other side. So I think it will work now. So can peak is not valid anymore. So why does it? Fit? Can peak if. Our offset is less than zero. We cannot Our offset. But I should be able to peak. Let's see. Let's do it again. Also, let's just. Go there. So we pass our first repetition, then our second. So we can peak. Let's follow this call. So we pass an atom. We actually peak. So we are looking at the. So we can peak one character. This works. B is an atom. Aha. Uh -huh. This advance should be fine. 
So then we return an atom. Now we cannot pee. I see. So I, I have to do something like if if I cannot peek, I'm just going to return the atom. So and else I will just grab this again. Okay, fine. Uh, I have to like this here too. So I can peek and peek, of course. Of course, of course. Okay. Now it should actually pass. Very small example. So I get a result, no crash, but a result, uh, and I get a successful value. So get a let's clean up our debug our views. So we have a concatenation, and let's pass our result to a um, so we have on the left side, we do we have another concrete. This would be fine. So I can't access this. So I'm just going to copy the pointer and did you um, let's do something dirty. Let's just directly cast the pointer to our value, but we it's it's fine, it's fine. So um in our inner concatenation contains a atom, another atom. On the right hand side of our outer concatenation we have another atom. Um <clears throat> so maybe we will just print we will just print our tree. So um Let's oh, uh, maybe let's do a logger. Let's do a logger. Let's logger. Mm. Also, what would be great? Yes. Ignore this this thought. So a template uh, a logger for our regex, and uh, here we have a public method which I'm going which has to um, be named. It has to be static and it has to be called log, and I'm taking a const. Uh, regex reference. Going to it's facing here. The, in the implementation, of course, will be in the source file, and I'm with logging include uh, core logging. No. Log and now put this here also in the namespace and let's go logger and the log method gets a, a const reference regex. Um, yeah, so and now to log this, I'm just going to the values type. And I'm just going to uh, implement them all. So basically, to log this, I'm going to logging. I'm just going to as a so. If we have an invalid regex value, I'm just going to print invalid. Done. Oh, and uh, of course I have to break. Uh, if we see a atom, 
I'm just going to logging log atom open parentheses uh, closing parentheses break but also I would like to print the actual payload so let's add break here and just um, cast it so um, uh, can I set a cast so now I'm learning about casts in this project because I don't really know in which case you use which cast I think it should work fine. So, and this of course is also const. So then I can just print like this. I'm thinking to print it all in a different style. So, oh, and this break, no way. Okay, so. Going to go silent mode for a bit. So now I'm needing, uh, I'm requiring accessors, which I dropped here as well. So I'm going to go my this one. So I, I want, I want to cast to atom. I can static cast. So let's just go here and just say um, say value so I have to do several things so first of all all this value this members called value now uh, and getter also has to be adjusted right now I can correct value here so expression dot value and I'm just going to print um, like single quotes. What, what, what is your problem now? Uh, maybe let's just fix the other problem. So, um, so let's assume left and right and it can't be null. So I'm just going to build read only accessors. Automatically give reference the value, which is quite nice. And those for uh, both of those can. So I can just copy paste this to animation as well. Fine. I'm already add, uh, also adding similar getter. So in this case, it's called. Oh, well, we just. The underlying expression of this, I can also copy paste. More compact. I oh, know I like, like the space between the structure and the compressor function of its call it function. <clears throat> and yeah, this should be it. Now I should be able to print everything. So now I can just print the uh, left hand side, then a comma, and then the question of right hand side. What is your problem? And I can't that a cast. Uh, to a derived class. Oh, 
well, but okay, then I just use plus all i. But I know that this that this is correct. I can do that because in this well. So let's copy paste this for coordination as well. Let's also copy and paste this for and paste of course. Uh, this will fail since I have, don't have a left and a right accessor, but an expression. Let's join those. So now positive key option. <coughs> so let's just say we reach here. We say um, this crash. But this is in a recursive call chain that this would be fine. Okay, okay. Oh well, it should be fine. Oh so what if I I just oh run log regex. Um let's also add a time break. Mm -hmm. Okay, assertion failed. Line 99. Okay. Did I forget a case? What do we have here? Oh. So let's see. We have an atom, we cast it as an atom. We have an alternative, we cast it as an alternative. Concord, concord, cleany, cleany, positive, key, positive. Key. So it looks. Where do we get this value from? Um, so we have a con concatenation. Um, we have another concatenation. And almost or the atom would be an atom. Why is my atom wrecked? So I say that atom to where do I allocate my? Oh, somewhere my object gets destroyed. How do I destroy my object? Where does this work uh, value come from? Oh. I don't quite see the problem here. Have a 
get a value for a JIX. We look at the values type. Depending on the type, we dispatch different, to different cases. We see an atom. Pass it as an oh, the right kind of cast. Uh, So oh, let's let's uh, try static cast. Let's just try it. Let's just run. See what happens. Yeah. Doesn't work. So I would have I wouldn't have expected that it actually works. So let's place it back. Well, it's still unreachable, but it's always the same value. So oh, is this a weird model? So it is no not a like overflow exception, segmentation fault. Um so and of course I'm leaking memory like silly here, but would not be a problem here. So So let's look how I allocate my stuff. Who my forward argument? But th those are only pointers. Oh, this fine. I'm just newing this, turning this into a regular expression, or upcasting this to the base class. So now, if I allocate. This returns a regular a regex, regex pointer, but it allocates a key me. Okay, so of course it allocates an atom. Okay, so it allocates a when does it tell a type? So basically this returns so let's catch this and let's move the assertion here. So res type. So at this point, we only about to see atoms. So I would not expect that this assert fails. Let's try D1. Oh, no, doesn't happen. No, this, this should not happen. Thing. Yeah, a problem with my. Well, this could be a problem, but I copy pasted this wrong. You've probably noticed that. So let's see. 
Ah, the link executable was still running. Ah, still. Problem. Your compiler. Okay. Now, first of all, first call to log, we see an A concatenation, second, F third, F44. So, the innermost. So, what happens here? We don't. So oh. we get a visitor. No, he doesn't want to. My so my cat is walking on my desk. Hi. Hi. No, let's actually have a look again what we actually pass. So let's set another breakpoint here. Now oh, we have a result, a successful result. The first level will be a concrete. Maybe I can just, so we know that this is a concrete. So just let's just concatenation. Let's call it outer, and we have a reinterpret cast. Okay. Let's just cast the tray concatenation. And yeah, so this one. Then of course. The left side of our outer is also a concatenation. And I call this inner. Then we have three atoms. Ah. So let's just reference here. E reference outer outer dot left why does this try Passed away const. Oh, he chose to not show himself in the, in the camera. So he's sitting here. Oh, maybe, maybe I put the camera like this, then the cat's also visible. So, and then I have three, um, three atoms. So, atom E. Left of inner the atom and the right of our inner concatenation atom also should have oh, we should have the outer right should also be an atom. So let's see if this works. So this is the structure we are acting, so we're just naively writing this down. So we have an outer. This is actually a concatenation. It has a concatenation in an atom. Yeah, so inner also is a concatenation. Atom, another atom, right? 
we're just peeling off the atoms. Um, now we have a character A, a character B, a C. So by peeling, peeling it away, away like this, it works fine, but if I'm using the logger, it doesn't work. Change. So value. Maybe do I have to help it a little bit? But I simply print it as a reference. I think it might copy the value. Well, yeah, I can't copy it. So class with different notations. Oh, it's a solution. Compiler, what's your problem? So oh, let's comp compare addresses. Oh, because when I get here, I can Look at the addresses. The stack frame. So we jump around a little bit. So our value. Show us our address. Don't. Okay. Fine. Question left, right, or then follow it. Have I concluded? Follow it again. Here. X. Here it is already deployed. Now we have this call. How well what it does. Copy. Oil. Active but reference. It still copies this. Look. Oh, here. Of course, we have a. Oh, yeah. See, the T, of course, is a const reference. Oh, so this is fine. Here it is also a const. So, does it switch between const reference and copying it? One, one, when does it do so? So, see, there's still a problem with. A logging thing. Yeah, potentially. Else. What if I add another case here and say, okay, um, we get a T by value. 
And let's just exclude references, I guess. So std enable if. Therefore, I have to put um, type traits. Also, I would like to those as a um, absolute path. So logger, I want to import logger and also for types like this. So and here, enable if I want to enable this. Um, if so, I'd like to enable if 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 we not our reference so the the reference is not a reference like this. Um, so in uh, f give it a pass oh it's a type yeah yeah but not v it's v. so in this case i'm requesting a logger for this and passing it as a so i don't know if this changes anything i'm just going to rebuild and see what happens just a guess just a wild guess Bam. So, okay, so it is already All right. So let's see. Here we get a const reference already broken. So oh, here we have a connection. This is already copied, I suppose. Correct. Also, a <laughs> 69, nice. So this is correct. So it, I think it switches between const reference and copying values. Um, where does it copy? I only want to pass it as a reference construct. As this. Do I have to do. Do I have to forward those? Keep those as a const reference. Really not sure. I need utility. Oh. Oh, it's still correct. So well, this one is passed by reference, but it is already broken. This one is passed by copy and it's also broken. Also 69. I, I like that it's re 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 reproduced. So well, this one is already copied. So, hmm. so basically the logger really working since why does it choose to pass it as a reference? I I would like to always keep it as a reference. Is it because I have weird uh, specializations of logger? Is. 
Oh. Maybe, but this is completely unrelated. So I'm curious, looking at regex. Oh, this is different, but unrelated. Ah, how can I change this? Keeps a reference. But I could change it all to pointers, but what's the point? <laughs> wow, nice. Um, so basically, the value is already wrecked. Um, so this is a const reference find. So it works. First argument is a const reference, but not if the reference set of the uh, parameter pack. So to the to you. So const uh, the so uh, log turns ref. To copy a uh, log copy values if um, a const um, is eight marks. So I don't know how to specify. This. Further, but this is the problem. So I can work around it um, for now. So I'm just going to lock the look so stupid, but let's lock those separately. So basically, um, I can lock it like this. So brings this is a const reference. And a string can follow it, but uh, the other way around is not possible at the moment. So I have to fix this, but I'm just going to work around this problem. Yeah, so so this would be possible now uh, and not crash. Fix it here as well. I think I can just see that. So only the first line differentiates is different, and next lines are the same. So just lock the first line. In this case, This case, so please, please let please let it work. Perfect workaround if it works now. Please works, and I. Uh, Require and I expect this structure, so it works as intended. Perfect. So, um, yeah, let's uh, move ahead. I suppose. So now, can pass concatenations. Um, and now the weakest priority level, so alternative. Alternative. And an alternative basically works uh, like concatenation, um, except they are separated by 
a bar. So I'm just parsing in concatenation first. I think I could just do the structure. So if we can peak and um, peak is a uh, bar, so the alternative symbol, the pipe character, then we continue parsing the concatenation and we are building alternative. So I think this should be should be it. I think now we can actually um, parse alternative. So let's keep test our example. So we let's let's not look what actually is printed. We expect an no 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 no. Ah, I already saw it. But this not expected. I did not expect. I did expect concatenation of A and B, but then I would would have expected a alternative C. So wrapped in alternative followed by a C. So let's see what uh, happened here. So alternative, but I printed the left right. So no problem here. Ah, uh, now what the problem is. Of course. Oh, and also let's something like this. Um, let's do handle this differently. And if we are, we reach the end. So we pass a single expression, single expression, but we can still peak. Um, and Say um, non x or with arms non exhaustive. So that is if we uh, we have a similar problem like this in the future. So we I forget to update the parser. Now uh, it should fail with the message non exhaustive pass since it consumed a few characters, but it has still more to visit. So we have always to fetch the whole regex for now. So in, in this case, non uh, we get the error non exhaustive pass because we passed a con concatenation, but there's still, less, um, there's still characters left in the input. We didn't consume them. And yeah, so. Now this is a little bit more stable. Now I should be able to pass whole input. Uh, expected atom, but what pipe? So this is because I have to zoom the pipe symbol. So advance here. Let's just assert that it wants is pipe, which we already checked here, but yeah, that's doesn't really matter to repeat this. Yeah, so okay, so now we we found an alternative uh, with some something and a C and uh, inside. Alternative, we have a concatenation uh, with an A and an B. So I think we didn't test parsing postfix operator, so let's do something weird like this. And um, yeah, so works. Works. So we have a alternative. This is correct. On the left hand side, we have a concatenation. This is correct. On the right hand side, it's an atom. Perfect. The concatenation consists of an A on the right side and an Kini on the right side, which finally does an atom with an B. So I think it works. So, um, 
this is the basic structure of my program. I just I just want to want to do this basically. Um, so of course the parser is not really exhaustive. I can't parse space, for example, and some other characters like I mean can't do escape sequences and things. And I can't do parentheses for now and can't do braces. But simple, I can do a simple, uh, a simple matrix, uh, regular exp Um Yeah, so basically, I'm thinking to work on to do a little excursion, I guess. So I now won't be able to just uh, uh, construct strings containing those. Yeah, basically those strings and just 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 want to use them and automatically test the parser. So I think uh, on the next time at the next time we are going to look into testing. So let's see. Um, it would would be great if we could somehow use our lock operation to construct strings. So. Um, and, and we generalize, generalize block, plug lock, construct strings. Um, I think it should be able to. And uh, of course, we, can, we can't do only string views anymore since we have to grow a string. So, um, yeah. so a string view is an immutable view, but to build a string we have to heap allocate it. So I think we also gonna do a string uh, and I don't know maybe a string builder. Um, and then we are, will work on the tests. At the next time, so I'm of doing a little excursion, and then we will continue working on the parser and just write some tests for it using these strings. Um, and then the next but one, so at the after. Next video, I think we're going to continue working on the parser and making it more stable. But yeah, might be I might switch back and forth between the string and the parser. So, but now let's just commit what we did today. So we introduced. A representation of a regex expression, a regular expression, and a parser for it. Um, and this is just the temporary, temporal, tempo, temporary test. So the thought for now. Let's just. Well, I, I think I will discard everything. So I try it and just add the comment, the separate comment. Um, but maybe let's do this first. So let's unstage everything. Let's just do this. So I will include those and stage those changes. Really nice visual patch. So this relative what logging. Now Remaining um, problem with 
logging mechanism. So and now those changes I will discard those changes. It should it, it should still run. I'm keeping the The way I'm logging it right here. So it still works, no crash, no assert. Okay, so this is the changes in our build system and the classes. Uh, let's stage it and let's look through it from last time. So um, reduce the rep uh, representations for atoms, for alternatives or cleanies, for concatenations, for positive cleanies optional and we also defined a logger for this and we're just uh, here we're just printing them simple constructors here and pass it we have a really simple interface um, and here we uh, pass something we currently just call to pass it alternative Handled rest basically, and we're just ignoring errors. We're just saying pass error. We might do some more fancy in the future and to pass an alternative, which we are doing as an entry point basically. We're trying to pass a postfix operator. We communicate the error, and if we still can see a uh, oh, sorry, alternative. We pass an alternative. Yeah. So I jumped to the wrong position. So we try to pass an auto uh, concatenation and we try to continue to pass a con concatenation as long as we can still look ahead and currently be a, a bar, so a pipe character. And we see a pipe character and we can peek. We skip it and try to pass a continuation. We continue to uh, pass alternatives. Uh, we saw everything or an error occurred and a concatenation. Very similar, uh, except we just continue as long as we are still at a concatenation. And so the concatenation is done by just a juxtaposition. So just writing regular expression. Terms next to each other will concatenate them, so we don't have to handle a special character here. And so this one calls the next precedence level parser. Basically, um, the postfix operator has the highest precedence. We're just trying to pass an atom, which will just, we will just peek ahead. Atom is currently only a single character. Um, Later, we will add character cl classes here as well, and maybe um, I'm not sure, but we might um, compact our representation so that we don't introduce a new AST node for every char character, but maybe we will batch them as a sequence, basically. I'm not sure, but we could do this. Or we could just keep it as is for now. So and a postfix, op uh, postfix operator just tries to pass an atom. If it fails, it, delegate, uh, it returns this as an error. Um, also, if we reach the end of the source, we accept with the atom we already seen. And else, if we have another, uh, we see one of the three characters, we cr uh, wrap this atom we saw in the corresponding AST node, uh, else we just return the atom. So and then, uh, then we have just a, a few helper methods for uh, to check if we can actually peak our input sequence and then the method to keep peak and to advance. And um, yeah, and we, of course, we have a small helper which decides the character is part of an atom. So, very trivial uh, parser, only a couple of lines. So. Um, so here's the line count uh, 400 
So really, really uh, easy concept. Um, yeah. So and then let's just um, let's commit something like this. So start work on on regex parser on a regex. So introduce a parser that capable of parsing capable. I think it's I just typed this. So let's just make sure now it's right. So uh, it didn't mistype it. Parsing basic. Um, first uh, version and pass base um, an atom. A single character atom um, the concatenation the alternative and the post postfix operators cleany positive cleany and opt optional. So well, let's also include the operators. Uh -huh. I'm using text position. So also I think um, I'm writing this correct, but let's double check. Just our position. Juxtaposition. Okay. But this is German. How is it written in English? Juxtaposition. Yeah, I mean this. So perfect. So. Did I actually write it correct? Well, let's just double check. I'm sorry, I just need to. <clears throat> well, looks good. So um, let's just okay. Let's just reread re our message. So the description: Introduce a parser that is capable of parsing basic regular expression. First version and pass. Uh, single ca character atoms, the concatenation. Uh, so let's use plural. It sounds a little nicer. Concatenations, alternatives, and postfix operators, cleaning, positive cleaning, and optional. Um, we can't. Um, can't. And correct character classes um, and grouping using when parentheses. What are we missing? A pass character class. Grouped and grouped. In parentheses. Okay, I think this should be fine. Uh, maybe, maybe let's just add using the correct, um, using a sensible 
pestilence. 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 Okay, fine. Maybe maybe this is just just fine. So this is everything I would wanted to achieve today. Um, let's let's just rerun it with a different string. I think uh, let's just do hello. Let's just do something like this. Oh, well, I ha I would have to. Ah, uh, well, I can't do this right now. So let's just do a hello cat. We will have a lot of nested coordination. Doesn't work. Ah, I can't pass space here. So just work around this. So also, it's not perfect, of course, but it doesn't have to be perfect during development. We will continue work on this. So we have a lot of concatenations nested. So H and E followed by L, followed by L, followed by O, followed by C, um, followed by positive. So, so yeah, I think it, the structure checks out. So as I already said, next time some strings, string builders, some um, generaliza general generalization of our logging mechanism and some unit tests. Um, so then I can test everything our browser can, can do basically and so uh, for more confidence. And then we will just, uh, I don't know how we do this, I think we will, we will just run every test every time we are starting, but <clears throat> First things first. Uh, uh, we have just uh, first. We should first, of course, be able to define tests, call them. And, yeah. So well, I think you didn't hear last sentence, but yeah, let's just wrap up. Have a nice day. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.